All right, I went ahead and mastered Figma slides so you don't have to. So today we're gonna go ahead and look at how to get started uh, building out your first Figma slides, including covering things like animation between slides, presentation mode, and even look at some live interactions as well. Uh, before we get started, I would just like to call out here at UI Collective, we have lots on the go, including a ton of great free resources. So I'll put some links in the description. Be sure to check those out and let's get started. All right, so let's look at an overview of Figma slides, or as they call that, config, fides. I actually do kind of like fides, but for today, we'll go with Figma slides. <laughs> so one thing I like, so the first thing uh, that you see when you decide to create a new Figma slide is you have all these different templates that you can choose from. So you can see the most recent, you have some basic ones here as well, and you do have all these much more modern looking templates, which are way better than the ones that you might find in PowerPoint, which are straight out of 2010. So another thing I do really like, and what's something that drives me crazy about PowerPoint, is you can't really preview all the different slides associated with the PowerPoint template. You kind of need to choose a template to see the slides. Uh, but with, he, with Figma slides, you have the ability to view a template itself. So you can see all the different slides uh, associated with that template to make sure that you choose the right template the first time. Again, they've got awesome, great templates for things like a product roadmap, a design review, a research readout, everything that designers might go through uh, on a daily basis. So with that said, well, I'm going to go ahead and pick um, uh, a template here. Let's try to find one associated with the UI Collective brand. Let's see if there's a purple one. I guess there's this pink. This is close enough. No, I'm not really a fan of that one. Sorry, now I'm just getting picky now. Let's go with uh, this one right here. I think this one's kind of kind of nice, kind of basic. I really do like that background color. So let's use this one. So when I choose a template, I can see that we have the a title slide loaded as it would be uh, with PowerPoint. If I do want to add uh, another slide, I can come here to the left-hand side and this left-hand sidebar and hit new slide. And then I can see all of the different uh, templates that I, can, that I can choose from. So let's select one right now. So when I select one, I can see just like PowerPoint, it's adding a second slide. The first thing that I was actually tempted to do uh, when working with Figma slides is actually try to scroll out and see all of those different slides together and start drawing um, sort of like my prototype links between them, where if I click on this, it will go to this slide. Now, uh, we'll get to prototyping and how to animate between slides a little bit later on in this video. But one thing I would like to highlight is this awesome uh, feature called grid mode. One thing that drives me absolutely crazy with PowerPoint is I can't see all of my slides at once. And I'm actually working on a research report now for a project uh, associated with a design system um, where it, I'm at like 50 slides in that PowerPoint. And I would love to be able to see all of my different slides at once so I can almost like scroll through and see the story that I'm painting. And this grid view really allows you to do that. You can also drag different elements in between uh, your slides and also even rearrange the order of the slides as well. And I think that's super, super handy. So let's go back to, oops, let's move our title slide back to number one. And let's go back uh, to uh, our standard view here. Moving on the right-hand side, we have our animate functionality, which we'll get to a little bit later on. And again, this is where you can adjust some of the basics. So you can change the background color if you'd like, uh, but just note that it does not change the background color across the entire template. So let's uh, go ahead and change that uh, back. There we go. And if I was to click into uh, different text elements, that's where you'd have your different options to adjust things like your title, uh, make it bold, all your different standard features as you would have uh, in Figma itself. So there's just a real quick walkthrough and let's dive a little bit deeper into Figma slides, uh, including some nuances around smart animation, adding speaker notes, and also design mode. Now, if you're like me, who's actually used Figma in order to build presentations before, again, not in PowerPoint, not where I'd actually export the PNGs or JPEGs and bring them into PowerPoint, but actually build designs in Figma, them Figma themselves and then present using Figma, one thing that drives me up, that drove me absolutely crazy was not the ability to add speaker notes um, to different slides. I'd always end up getting tripped up on my words or forget what was I supposed to talk about in the next slide. So one thing that's really unique with Figma slides and something that's awesome is the ability to add different presenter notes. So let me go into the second slide here. And uh, at first when I was looking for this feature, I was actually looking at the bottom here uh, in this tab, but where the presenter notes are actually hidden is this line that's right here. So if I hover over, I can see it show presenter notes. So when I hit that, uh, I can go ahead and add some different presenter notes uh, like hello or join UI collective, something like that. And if I'm almost writing more of a script, I have the ability to uh, extend that out and uh, write a lot more uh, in there. 
So then um, when I go ahead and present this here and I hit this play button, there's two options here. So there's present and present with notes. So let's look at the difference between the two. Now, the present mode is very similar to what was in, uh, is what you might've been doing before if you were building slides within PowerPoint. It's really just like that prototype functionality. You know, you click between slides, that kind of thing. But uh, what's really awesome is you also have this present in notes view where once it loads, there we go, is now I can see my notes here uh, on the right-hand side themselves. So as I'm scrolling through um, the slides, uh, I can read my notes here on the right-hand side. And let's say if I'm working on almost like a script, you know, it's a really important presentation, maybe you're a consultant, you kind of do need to have a very fixed script. There's also this button here uh, where it put, puts the slides tighter together on the left-hand side and expands the space where you'd have your speaker notes. So it gives you more room uh, to read. One thing that actually is really nice as well is Figma did also open up the slide itself in the viewer mode. So as you're presenting, you can see exactly what it is that those watching the presentation are seeing. And I think that's super, super uh, handy. So there's a real quick overview uh, of speaker notes and some of the functionality associated with present mode. Next, what we're going to do is look at some nuances around smart animation. All right, now let's look at uh, animation between slides. So those nice transitions. Now, one thing that was a little bit confusing to start is let's say on this slide here, maybe I wanted this to push in from the right-hand side. So what I'd actually do, if you were on design, you'd hit this tab called animate and you could adjust the style transition. So again, you have things like smart animate that you might be super familiar with and Figma prototyping, dissolve, push, slide in, slide out, you know, the basics. So in this case, I'd select, select slide in. And let's say maybe I want to slide it in from uh, the right hand side because it's the next slide. Now, if I was to actually go ahead uh, and present this, there we go. And I was to click look what happened. There was no animation associated with it. And I thought that was kind of strange. That was my first instinct. I was like, well, why is there no animation there? What you actually need to do is set this transition style on the slide before. So if I'm on homepage and I want to push, uh, let's say push up, whereas on this slide, it is slide in. I would present this. And then look what happens. Then that transition actually occurs. So you're tra you're applying the transition for the next slide on the slide that you're currently on. And let's dive a little bit deeper here. So again, let me um, let's maybe add one more here. So again, I'm not going to have uh, a style transition on my third slide right here. My second slide does have that transition style applied. Let's go ahead and pre present this. So there we have that animation. And then there we have that slide in from the right hand side. So you're almost working one slide backwards where you're looking to apply that transition style. Now, after all, we are designers. And if you're like me, I have an absolute obsession with using auto layout. I absolutely auto layout everything, even if it doesn't need to be auto layout. So when I came here for the first time, I was like, where on earth is my auto layout? And Figma actually still does have auto layout within Figma slides here. So at the bottom, you have this little toggle uh, to toggle on design mode. And that's where you could actually find things like your layout grid, your positioning, your auto layout, so on and so forth. So let's say if I wanted to, oops, I already have this in a frame. Sorry, I got ahead of myself here. Uh, let's say if I wanted to maybe add some auto layout here to really control the, uh, the, uh, the gap between this line and this heading. What I could do is select both as I normally would, shift A, add my auto layout, and then there I have uh, my auto layout here at the bottom and all my other elements uh, as well that I'd be used to in the normal uh, Figma editor. So again, everything is still here. So your normal Figma functionality is just hidden in this design mode. If I want to go back to the slide mode, what I could do is just simply hit that. And then I go back uh, to my normal elements here uh, on the right hand side uh, that comes standard uh, with Figma slides. All right, let's face it. There's absolutely nothing worse than a presentation that's boring and you, where you have no idea if the audience is actually even still listening or even still at their computer just because they just have their camera off. So what Figma's done is actually introduced a live interaction functionality. So let me just go ahead and just clear this text uh, on screen here. So with this button here, uh, kind of in the middle with live interaction, it gives you some different options that allows you to interact with your audience. So whether it's a poll, 
uh, some stamps, uh, an alignment scale, uh, or even insert a prototype itself. Now, I'm not going to play around with the prototype functionality today. Yeah, because when you hit prototype functionality, it previews a lot of your your other prototypes, and some of my prototypes have some client names, which I uh, which shall remain nameless. Uh, so that option is there if you want to experiment it with it uh, on your own. So in this case, let's go ahead and play around with, let's say, uh, an alignment functionality. And you know, let's try to add a couple here. Let's also go maybe with a poll as well. Oh, perfect. So I can add more than one uh, to a screen. So here you have a different alignment scale. And then uh, let's ask a question. So will you subscribe to UI Collective? Please do. Uh, and then let's go ahead uh, and preview this here. So let's uh, let me move this up. Let's go ahead and preview this. So then when an audience, when your audience members are actually viewing the slide itself, they have the ability to actually interact. So do you agree? Yes or no? Maybe some different options as well. Maybe you're showing some different prototype choices and your audience can vote on those anonymously or say how aligned they are with maybe a different approach. So uh, there we go. Results are revealed and you can even play around with it uh, on your own as well. And as again, it's a real great way uh, to keep things anonymous. Maybe people don't like sharing their opinion in front of a larger group. And again, it just helps keep your audience uh, that much uh, more engaged.